last week. For your information, we have reached week 12 of our semester. I'm not sure whether this is a good news for you all, yeah? This week is the last week for our online teacher class. That means today's topic, which is topic 9, entitled Financial Control and Accountability, will be our last online lecture class together. Before we start with the lesson, I hope you guys are doing well so far. And oh, by the way, happy new year everyone. Alright class, so this is our final topic for this semester, which is financial control and accountability. This is topic 9, yeah? Okay, as usual, before we proceed to the content of the lesson, let's take a look at the syllabus content. So, uh, based on the syllabus content, we will look at the definition of financial control and accountability, these two keywords here, yeah? financial control and accountability. And then the objectives of accountability, principles of effective accountability, types of accountability, followed by mechanism for enhancing control and accountability, as well as the internal and also external control. Alright now, let's take a look at the definition of financial control or it is also called as budgetary control. Okay, financial or budgetary control is the establishment of a budgeting system to formulate financial action plans for the operations and the system to direct such finances to achieve the desired actions specified in the budget. So, financial control is also a technique whereby actual results are compared with budgets. It is also a process that is undertaken throughout the budget period where budget and targets are continuously examined for review or adjustment depending on the performance. It is used as a means of making managers and heads of departments accountable for their actions and decisions. MOF or Ministry of Finance is responsible for the national budgetary control to ensure the expenditures of the country are always within the available resources. Responsibility of the budgetary control lies with the respective heads or controlling officer of such organizations. For other ministries, departments, statutory bodies or other government agencies, budgets are prepared under the control of responsible officials or managers and these budgets are compared periodically to any achievement in the form of actual expenditures of the unit or department. Okay guys, what, uh, what are the things that you need to really emphasize in terms of financial control or budgetary control meaning uh, are? Okay, the first one. What is exactly the meaning of it? And then the second one, who is in charge of it? And then the third one, for what? Okay? So, remember, whenever you want to define or explain about financial control or budgetary control, you have to define on what is exactly the meaning, the meaning of financial control, and who is in charge of it, and then why it is being implemented. Okay? So if you know, if you try to relate it with these three criteria, it's very easy for you to understand the whole process. Yeah? Okay, so a good budgetary control system must have the following features. Okay, so there are four features given here. Yeah? The first one is the organization is broken down into various responsibility centers where each center is to carry out identified activities. A detailed plan is formulated into a comprehensive budget. The objectives, output, and outcomes of the organization are used as the, as the basis for measuring performance. Okay, this is actually common sense, yeah, and as you all already know, everything that we need to evaluate, evaluate or everything that we want to assess is always based on the objectives of the program and then the set goals, yeah. So anything to do with um, checking on um, budgetary control, checking on evaluation or whatever it is that is related to government program, it is always based on the objective and the set goal. Okay. So a performance indicator is developed to monitor and evaluate the performance and progress of each responsibility center of the 
organization. A continuous performance evaluation is carried out to determine the performance of the organization, output, or outcomes. Okay, in a simple understanding, yeah, um, budgetary control or uh, finance, financial control is actually uh, a kind of uh, something like follow up, uh, a kind of follow up or um, constant check up on a progress of a program that is being implemented, yeah. So just uh, keep in your mind that um, control, budgetary control and financial control is all about the follow-up of the program's progress. Okay? So by then you will understand more on um, the, the related things that is related with con uh, budgetary control system. Yeah? As long as you understand what is the core meaning of it, anything that is uh, given to you related to the system you will you will get to know it faster you will get to interpret the meaning faster as well okay next one all right let's take a look at types of financial or budgetary control so we have one two three four five six seven seven types of budgetary control over here yeah Okay, I know that the text is quite small and then I don't know whether you can uh, read it or not, but never mind. I'll give you the slides later, yeah? Okay, fund control, the first one, refers to the procedures set up to ensure the fund is properly kept and used in the right way. So this is fund control, yeah? Second one is revenue control. Revenue control refers to the procedures set up to ensure the collection of revenues of the government are from properly identified sources, there are proper monitoring of such collections and revenues collected are accounted. So, this is uh, actually a, a control in which uh, the collection of the revenue is being taken care of. So, um, the revenue control um, involves a set of procedures in which the person in charge who is in control of revenue control must follow the procedures okay next one it is always followed by expenditure control yeah after revenue must be followed by expenditure control so expenditure control is a control procedure within the spending organization to ensure that all spending is done exactly for the purpose that has been Agreed. This is very straightforward, yeah? And then next one is cost control. Cost control is the procedure to ensure the total cost incurred for any activity of an organization is within the right valuation. Next one is the cash control, yeah? Okay, cash control uh, is to ensure that spending Spending plans for a period are made by a department based on approved vouchers. And the next one, payment or disbursement control is a procedure to ensure that payment for any activities through preparation of payment vouchers is properly authorized. And then last but not least, salary or payroll control is to ensure that right amounts are paid to the right people in the organization and at the right time to avoid fraud and payment to non-existing workers. So there are two keywords that you really need to emphasize on all, all types of financial or budgetary control. Yeah, the first one is the procedures and then the second one is the right amount and the right time. Okay, so as long as you know what are the criteria that you need to emphasize, you will understand it better. Yeah? So we have Seven, seven types of financial or budgetary control. Next one, advantages of budgeting and budgetary, budgetary control. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, yeah? The first one requires and forces management to think about the future, to look ahead, to set out detailed plans for achieving the targets. Secondly, promotes coordination and communication. Thirdly, clearly defines areas of responsibility where managers of budget centers are to be made responsible for the achievement of budget targets. Fourthly, 
provide a basis for performance appraisal where actual performance is measured and assessed. And then next one, enables remedial action to be taken as variances emerge, motivates employees by participating in the preparation of budgets, improves the allocation of scarce resources, and also economizes management time by using the management by exception principle. Okay, next one, we move on to the meaning of accountability. So accountability has been variously defined as implying a literal accounting or reporting function or implying explanation or justification of actions. This is according to Parker and Gould in 1999, page 116. Yeah? Accountability refers to the institutionalized relationship between two parties, the accounter and the accountee. It involves the giving and rendering of an account which is providing a statement explaining one's conduct or actions. It relates to ensure certain parties to be responsible and answerable for their actions on a given task. Accountability is seen as an umbrella concept that associated with the concepts of openness, transparency, equity, democracy, good governance, efficiency, responsiveness and integrity which the aims relates to good quality management, efficiency and productivity. The Malaysian constitution has highlighted on the need of accountability, for instance, Article 106 and 107 of the Federal Constitution put emphasize on the role and responsibilities of the AG, still remember what is AG, in ensuring public accountability. Okay, in a simple understanding, yeah, accountability is actually uh, the responsible, um, I mean, um, it is actually um, the quality of being responsible towards the given task that is given to you. Okay, so uh, in order for you to be, account be accountable with your work, you need to be very responsible and very responsive on doing your work. And then uh, uh, the implementation of your work is also um, take concern on the effectiveness and also the efficiency of the implementation. It's something like that, yeah? Okay, next one, the objectives and principles of accountability. Generally, the three primary objectives to achieve accountability in the public sector involving the following, yeah? Okay, so there are three. Three primary objectives in which the first one is to create an effective control to ensure management of public monies is in accordance with applicable laws and regulation. Secondly, set up an effective system for public officials to execute the responsibilities entrusted to them. Thirdly, to utilize public monies in accordance with authorized purpose and relevant activities are carried out in an orderly and efficient manner without an wastage. Yeah? Alright, next one. Principles of effective accountability. So we have five principles over here. The first one, clear roles and responsibilities. So this is the most important part in um, principle of effective accountability. Okay, so the first one. The roles and responsibilities of the parties in the accountability relationship should be well understood and agreed upon. So there must be a clear understanding between uh, the, the two people that is in charge of the things. Yeah? So um, accountability relationship means that these two people must be agreed and also understand each other. Okay, And then secondly, Clear performance expectation, the objectives being pursued, the accomplishment expected, and the operating constraints to be respected should be explicit, understood, and agreed upon. Yeah? So there must be a very clear performance expectation in order to be evaluated as an effective accountability. And then the third one, balance expectations and capacities. Performance expectations should be clearly linked to and balanced with each other's party capacity okay, uh, in such authorities, 
skill and resources to deliver and then the fourth one credibility reporting credible and timely information should be reported to demonstrate what has been achieved whether the means used were appropriate and what has been uh, what has been learned the last one reasonable review and adjustment fair and informed review and feedback uh, on performance should be carried out achievements and difficulties are recognized appropriate corrections made and appropriate consequences for individuals carried out so please remember these five principles of effective accountability yeah? next one we have types of accountability so we have three types of accountability the first one is financial accountability second one is management accountability followed by program accountability so please remember we have financial accountability financial yeah management pengurusan and also program accountability uh, that means we have financial keuangan um, accountability in terms of uh, pengurusan keuangan and then accountability in terms of uh, pengurusan itu sendiri and then accountability in terms of the program itself yeah okay let's take a look at what is exactly financial accountability okay financial accountability emphasizes on the responsibility of each personnel to comply with all the relevant laws rules and regulations in performing their roles and responsibilities that means they really need to know clearly what are the responsibilities that they need to take in charge of yeah and do it efficiently okay the controlling and monitoring the utilization of public resources are crucial in achieving financial accountability and the next information pertaining to the related procedure and process on allocation and reporting should be transparent okay next one management accountability what is exactly management accountability so management accountability involves the responsibility of the management in ensuring effective efficient and economic utilization of public resources under their control the next point the use of budget as a performance management tool is the primary driving force behind governmental programs hence a key mechanism towards achieving high accountability and the next one program accountability yeah? it relates to the responsibility of personnel to ensure that the objectives of the individual program an activity of public sector or organizations uh, I'm sorry activity of public sector organizations are attained so uh, this is a common one I always remind you on this okay anything to do with the evaluation of the efficient efficiency of a program it must have to be related back to the objectives itself yeah always remember that all initial plans of programs and activities established are expected to be implemented accordingly. Every manager at the ministry, program or activity level is accountable to ensure that all plans and goals identified and described in the performance agreement and achieved accordingly. Yeah? Okay, chain of accountability process in Malaysia. I want you to read this uh, on your own. And then mechanism for enhancing control and accountability. What is exactly mechanism for enhancing control and accountability? Mechanism is actually the actor, yeah? the one who is in charge of controlling, uh, the one who is in charge of enhancing control and accountability. So who are in charge of this? Okay, the parliament or the one right there, auditor general office, public accounts committee or PAC, public complaint. Uh, Bureau, PCB, and also Malaysian Anti-Corruption Commission, MACC. Yeah. Next one, internal and external control. By the way, class, internal and external control is the last topic for this, for this lesson. Yeah? Okay. So internal control, what is internal control? Internal control is an integral process that is affected by an entity's management and personnel and is designed to address risks and to provide reasonable assurance that is pursued in pursuit of the entity's mission. So the following general objectives are being achieved. 
executing orderly, ethical, economical, efficient, and effective operations, fulfilling accountability obligations, complying with applicable laws and regulations, and also safeguarding resources against loss, misuse, and damage. Okay, um, next one, purpose of internal control system, to ensure compliance with laws or regulations, to ensure reliability of data or reports, facilitate efficiency and effectiveness of government operations, to guard against misuse or inefficient use of resources, and safeguarding assets. Okay, continue. Uh, this time around, it is um, for external control, yeah? So what is exactly external control? External control works together with internal control to ensure that planning, budgeting, and use of public resources conform to a country's laws, pursue the objectives defined by parliament and government, and are linked to the real world of program operation. External control typically means the Auditor General's Office, or SAI, and parliament. Yeah? So the role of the Supreme Audit Institution, or SAI, has evolved from the traditional task of verifying legality and regular regularity of financial management and of accounting to encompass efficiency and the effectiveness of financial and program management. So the parliament is the main external control that checks on the executive. Yeah? It does this through the passing of the budget and through its public accounts committee. Budget offices and finance ministries in general also perform external controls, reviews of spending, processes, performance, and value for money valuation. So we have come to an end of our lesson. So as usual, yeah, class, please stay safe and take care of yourself. Okay, bye.